let's look at conformations of disubstituted cyclohexanes. So let's start with let's start with the dot structure here, where we have a methyl group coming out at us in space. So let's go ahead and fill in that wedge there. And that's at carbon one, and then at carbon two, we're going to have another methyl group coming out at us in space. So we fill in that wedge as well. If we think about how to name this, of course the parent name would be cyclohexane. So let's see if we can fit cyclohexane in here. And we have two methyl groups at the one and two position. So it's going to be one, two, dimethyl cyclohexane. Those two methyl groups are coming out at us, so they're on the same side if we think about um, the flat plane of the carbon ring there. So we actually call this cis. So cis means on the same side. So if I have cis 1, 2, so let me get with the S there, cis 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane, the two methyl groups are on the same side of the ring. In this case, I have them going up. Let's go ahead and put in those methyl groups on our chair conformation over here on the right. So we saw from the last video that this is carbon 1, and then this is carbon 2. So if I'm going to put my methyl groups in there, I have to have a methyl group going up at carbon 1. So that's my first methyl group. And I need a methyl group going up at carbon 2. So there is my second methyl group like that. And now I can see that those two methyl groups are both going up. One is axial, one is equatorial. Let's go ahead and number my carbons for the rest of my structures here. So that's carbon 1, that's carbon 2. And again, we saw all of this in the last video. So that's carbon 1, that's carbon 2. Right here, this is where you're going to take this carbon and you're going to pull it down with your molecular model set. And if you do that, you will see that carbon will become this carbon right here. And so that is now carbon 1. And this is now carbon 2. And so if you just tilt it a little bit, right, that ends up being carbon 1. So if we number it, that is carbon 1. And that is carbon 2. So when we go ahead and put in our methyl groups, again, use your Molly mod set and actually do this with a disubstituted um, cyclohexane ring. And you will see if you follow your methyl groups, right, we had a methyl group here at 1 and a methyl group here at 2. And so this would be the methyl group at one, and this would be the methyl group at two. When you pull carbon one down with your molecular model set, the methyl group at one is going to move to here, and the methyl group at two is actually going to move up to here. And so for our second chair conformation, the methyl group at one is still up relative to the plane of the ring. Uh, the methyl group at 2 is still up relative to the plane of the ring, but it's a little different from how we started, remember, because we started with the methyl group at carbon 1 axial, and when you undergo ring flipping, the axial substituent ends up being equatorial in your second chair conformation. And for our methyl group at carbon 2, we started out being up and equatorial, and we end up being up and axial. So it switched from equatorial to axial like that. So this is just a reminder about how to figure out uh, where your substituents go when you're drawing your different chair conformations. Uh, let's see if we can draw those chair conformations uh, now that we know where to put our methyl groups. So hopefully you've practiced your chair conformations, right? So when you're doing it, remember to go very slowly, right, to try to get a decent carbon skeleton there. And then at carbon one, you're going to go up, carbon two, down, up, down, up, and down. And for your equatorial substituents, you would start down and then go up, and then down, and then up, and then down, and then up. So there's your, there's your cyclohexane ring. For our example, we had at carbon one, so this is carbon one, we had a methyl group up, for cis 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane, and at carbon 2, so let's go ahead and draw in carbon 2 right here, carbon 2, we also had a methyl group up like that. So let's go ahead and draw the other chair conformation. Right, so again, remember to go very slowly when you're drawing your chair conformation. 
and try your best to get those lines, those three sets of parallel lines in there. So at carbon one, you start down, carbon two, up, down, up, down, up, and then equatorial, up, down, and then up, and then down, and then up, and then down. So there is my chair confirmation. Uh, carbon one is now this carbon. So our methyl group was axial. It's going to go equatorial. So there is my methyl group right there at carbon one. My methyl group at carbon two, right, was equatorial. It's now going to go axial. So I have this situation. Which one of these two confirmations is the most stable? Well, if I think about the one on the left, I have one axial substituent and I have one equatorial substituent. If I think about it on the right, I also have one axial methyl group and one equatorial methyl group. So neither of these uh, is more stable than the other. They're, they're both very stable conformations of cis-1,2-dimethyl cyclo cyclohexane. So, so both of these are the same energy level. Let's, uh, let's do another one, also 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. But this time, we're going to put the methyl groups on different sides of our ring. So if I, at carbon 1, if I have uh, a methyl group coming out at me, so that's at carbon one. At carbon two, I'm gonna have a methyl group going away from me. I'm going to have a methyl group going away from me here, so like this. So my second methyl group is going into the page, so that's carbon one and that's carbon two. Well, once again, it, it's one, two, dimethyl cyclohexane. So one, two dimethyl cyclohexane. But this time, the methyl groups are on opposite sides, and we, we call this trans. So opposite sides, trans. So trans, one, two dimethyl cyclohexane. This is a different molecule from the cis, one, two dimethyl cyclohexane. You can't rotate cis into trans and vice versa. So a different molecule uh, with different properties and different chair conformations. So let's go ahead and draw the chair conformations for trans 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane. So again, go very slowly, right, when you're trying to draw your chair conformations. So, so something like that, right, and then we go up, down, up, down, up, down, and then down, up, down, up, down, up. So let's go ahead and draw the the second chair conformation here. So very carefully getting your lightning bolt configuration there. And this is now carbon one. So we go down and then up and then down and then up and then down and then up and then up, down, up, down, up, down. So again, just takes a lot of practice. So at carbon one, let's find carbon one over here. So here is carbon one on my chair confirmation. I have a methyl group up. So I put a methyl group up like that. At carbon two, I have a methyl group down relative to the plane of the ring. So it would have to go, here's carbon two, it would have to go down relative to the plane of the ring like that. And so you can see that the, the purple methyl group is up and the red methyl group is down. So they're on opposite sides of the ring. So this is trans. If we were to go undergo a ring flipping, right, this would become carbon one. And my methyl group that was axial is going to go equatorial, but it's still up relative to the plane of the ring. And if I think about this methyl group at carbon two, right, this is now carbon two right here. It was axial and down, so it's going to be down and equatorial. So my methyl group is going to go right here. If I think about these two conformations, uh, which one of these two is more stable? So let's think about the one on the left. I have a methyl group axial, so this is axial, and then this is axial, so I have two axial substituents. On the right, I have a methyl group equatorial and another methyl group equatorial. So two equatorial substituents. Remember, you want to get your bulky groups equatorial since that decreases your steric hindrance. So it turns out that the conformation on the right is the most stable for trans-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. And 
trans-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane turns out to be more stable than cis-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane because the cis version did not have a conformation as stable as this one. Always put your bulky stuff, equatorial, away from the rest of the ring to decrease your steric hindrance. Let's do one more. All right, so let's look at one more dot structure. Let's let's look at this one. So also a dye substituted, and we're going to put an ethyl group coming out at us. So CH2, CH3, and then a methyl group going away from us. So this would be carbon one, this would be carbon two, and this would be carbon three. So let's draw some chair conformations, and let's see if we can assess the stability of our chair conformations for this molecule. All right, so let's go ahead and draw our chair on the left here. Okay, so up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. All right, and then my other chair conformation. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that one in here. So something like that. I was a little bit off there, but down, up, down, up, down, up, and then up, down, up, down, up, and down. So let's start with the ethyl group. So the ethyl group is coming off of carbon one, and it's up. So here's carbon one, so I'm gonna put my ethyl group up relative to the plane of the ring like that. And then I have at carbon two, I have a methyl group going down. So at carbon, uh, sorry, at carbon three. So at carbon three, so this is carbon one, this is carbon two, and carbon three is over here. So I have an ethyl group going down at carbon three. So that must mean the, eth the, the methyl group is right here. So there's my CH3. When I undergo ring flipping, Right, so carbon one, this is carbon one, my axial ethyl group now goes equatorial, so it's CH2, CH3 right here. And carbon three would be over here. I had a methyl group that was down and equatorial, so that ethyl group is, uh, that methyl group, sorry, is going to move down and axial, so it now looks like that. Which one of these two is the most stable conformation for this molecule? Well, if I think about the example on the left, I have an ethyl group axial and a methyl group equatorial. The example on the right, I have a methyl group axial and an ethyl group equatorial. And since the ethyl group is bulkier than the methyl group, I would prefer to have the ethyl group in the equatorial position. So this turns out to be the more stable conformation. You can actually quantify this. Um, the math tells you that the steric hindrance of having the ethyl group axial turns out to be eight kilojoules per mole. So having the ethyl group axial is eight kilojoules per mole, whereas having the methyl group axial is 7.6 kilojoules per mole. So the lower energy is more stable. So the conformation on the right is the more stable conformation for this dye substituted cyclohexane.